Okay, so everyone knows I'm Farah. And um, so Menaz asked us yesterday, off the cuff, like it was nothing. Um, you've got to do a presentation and talk about your journey um, with the coaching program. And um, as soon as we came off the call, I thought I had this image in my head. I see a lot of things as pictures. So I thought, oh, I'm going to draw something. And don't laugh at my drawings, everyone. But I did some drawings. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you might relate to some of it. So I want you to be aware of that and how things might be different for you as well. Um, because obviously this is my own personal journey. Um, so the first image that I came up with, don't laugh, was this. Wow. Okay. So I know I don't look like that, everyone. But this is what I saw. And you can see certain points in my body there. Um, I think when I first started, I was very much thinking superficially, thinking from my head. A lot of it was coming from how can I fix things? How can I fix myself? Um, you can see there's a lot of stress around there. There's a lot of anxiety there was at that time in my life. And for the past, past two years, I've, I have truly been on a journey. Um, and this has really helped me. The coaching's really helped me. So this box you can see around me is my own barriers, my own boundaries that I was putting up for myself. Um, and I was scared to go out of those. You know, I was afraid of taking risks. You know what? I'm comfortable here. I'll just sit here. You know, what's this coaching going to do for me? I don't think it's going to do much. Let's see. Um, and I have to say, this is me now. Oh, I forgot to say. So, yeah, I was very much a, a thinker and, you know, not really thinking from the heart as much, not really trusting my heart, not really, really being aligned with my senses, my feelings, not being a very good listener, much of a talker, as you already know. Um, and I had gut feelings, but I didn't trust them. I just thought, oh, God, this is just a bodily reaction. Why am I feeling this way? You know, what? what is this feeling? Why am I getting it? And I didn't trust it and I didn't know what it meant. But going through this journey over eight months now, I can say that this is what I saw. This is the image. Are you ready? Ta-da! <laughs> so you can see the difference. And I want you to think about how has your image of yourself changed as well in that? You can see that, you know, my brain is pretty cool. It's cooled down. It's blue now. I'm chilled out, you know. Um, I'm awake as well. So in this one on the right, on this one, you can see I, I feel like I was asleep. I wasn't aware of what was happening with me, what was happening around me, what I wanted in life, my purpose, my alignment. And here I feel like a happier person, happy with myself, happy with the tools that I've gained. And you can see that my heart, I'm very much a, trusting what I feel in my heart now and what I'm feeling um and my gut my gut instinct it means something it's important I need to trust it I need to let it take me where it will um and I'm actually so I'm standing in a sea here sea of knowledge but here I'm actually immersed in this sea of wisdom and knowledge I'm floating in there I'm letting it take me where it will um, and this quote came to me. I'll just put it on the arm here. It says, what is seeking you will find you. Oh, sorry. No. <laughs> what is seeking, what you are seeking is seeking you. And this is a Persian poet called Rumi. And I suppose it meant something different to me before. But last night when it came to me, I was like, oh, my God, I found it. I found something. It's a gift. I've been given this gift and I need to pass it on. I can't keep it to myself. It's powerful. It's life changing. You know, my health is better. I'm a happier person. Um, and I know there's much more that I have to give. And I want to give back to my community. I want to. I think the next steps for me, if this picture were to change, 
I want you guys to think how this picture would change for you. But for me, I would have a, a big sea. And all of us, all these coaches floating in the sea, being happy and aligned with their values and just giving their gift out to the world, giving it out to the community. So that's me in a nutshell. Um, over these eight months, it's been such, I would never have believed the changes and I would never have believed the power that I feel like I have it's like a superpower and I feel I can just smile and some people might think oh she's a bit crazy why is she smiling because I feel like I've got this gift I've got this superpower and I hope you know meeting all your you amazing coaches on your journey you you guys all feel the very same no matter where you are there or you might not be where I am but this is where I am and um, I'm excited I've got goosebumps I can feel it in my body um, it's a spark it's a purpose a new purpose so thank you but um when when Manez asked us yesterday to reflect that just stirred something um in me yesterday and I went down a slight rabbit hole before I could even put some of these thoughts together and hopefully by the end of what I'm talking about you'll see why I went down this rabbit hole but ultimately um this course at, at the beginning I had zero expectation I had zero expectation of myself and I had no expectation of what to expect on the course because I've never done anything like this before and now I think that was a blessing because it has enabled everything to happen for me um, in the way that it has happened so first and foremost I have because of this course I have a really deeper understanding and awareness of the self and that's not just myself, but others. So self for me has come up there as um, really important. Um, but equally, although, although I've had purpose and I've been very blessed to know that I'm aware of the purpose that I have, but it was what I've discovered now is that discovery. So it's it's a contradiction. I've got the purpose, yet now it's that discovery and they're, they're kind of together. And equally, the choice, I'm all about choice and, and having those opportunities, but equally having the challenge as well. So I've realized through doing this course that it's given me that time to reflect on, you know, perhaps choices I've made in the past or choices that I might I might make in the future but what I'm aware of through this course is that actually when I make those choices they are mainly challenging choices and so that is really really helping me I'm really secure with that that going for going for an easy option is not the best thing for me and it's not necessarily the best thing as a coach because you need to be able to let yourself explore and discover so yes there are focus and there are plans and doing the course has enabled me to focus a little bit on that but equally it's the understanding that that doesn't matter if there's not a concrete plan that does not matter what matters is that you're giving yourself time to think about that and focus on it because equally if you've got the focus and the plans then on the other side of that is the is the what if what if there wasn't a plan where does that take you so I've learned that on those sort of four bullet points that those are things that I I have but there's a deeper understanding with that now so that that's where the enlightenment comes in um and then my own confidence and competencies at the beginning I would 
I think my competencies as a coach were probably two. Um, I'm still not entirely sure where they are now because I still feel there's so much more to learn and this is just the beginning. Um, but the confidence is super important for me and, and I'm, I'm happy, although it has gone up and down throughout the course. Um, I think this weekend, this module in particular, um, specifically after yesterday, that level of confidence was was there and I was happy with that. And so that's where the authenticity comes in, you know, being true to yourself. And, and as coaches, that's the one thing, you know, we encourage um, anybody that we're interacting with. The only thing is that they should be true to themselves more than anything. Um, and so being true to myself and speaking from the heart is is something that I'm comfortable with and, and I value really strongly. So the connection between my dreams and, and vision and my whole being are something that this course has really enabled me to really focus on in, in a much more productive way. Uh, and I'll talk about that a little bit in a minute. Um, my experience in life, um, in everything that I do, can be brought into, you know, perhaps me as a coach for somebody because, you know, you need the experience. And I want to be, as, as that quote says, I want to be that light that helps others see. Um, and what serves me well um, to help me grow and asking those questions um, throughout this course um, has been amazing. Nearly there. So if light attracts light, you know, that the dream and the vision, um, for me, it's really deep rooted and connected with life experience, you know, that that growth, you know, personal journey, that growth throughout the trauma. And therefore, for me, that dream would be, you know, having a parent house, you know, a home from home for families in the cancer community that that need to be close to hospital. It's a massive dream. Um, but from that dream comes through now the, the vision um and my aspirations and actually perhaps some of it is what I am already doing and maybe I hadn't realized and the coaching program has enabled me to reflect on you know what I have been currently doing with my life and you know supporting the cancer community is is so important um so perhaps now this gives me the opportunity to formalize what I do you know what formalizing what I do now to go beyond the now because what what is now is happening now but you know it's beyond that that's now the discovery and the excitement um and thinking about how best to support uh people in my community which for me is the cancer community so although this goes against what I've just said in slide one about having a plan, um, but that focus is on um, a cancer coach of some sort. Um, so what is next? What will the challenges be? What will the resources be that I need? And, and that's where um, this course is helping me look at all of those in turn before I actually make and commit to that actual plan. So. This is where I will try and share again uh, another screen. But um, for me, you know, this, this image here was literally taken a couple of weeks ago um, in my happy place. And, you know, watching the sunrise over the Greek islands every morning for seven days was just so good for the soul. And that is important to me because, you know, there are, as Edith Wharton says, there are two ways of spreading light. You can either be the candle or you can be the mirror that reflects the light. But I also have to experience that myself first before I can be that to others. 
So on that note, I'm just going to share a very, very small snippet of a video. Unfortunately, there's no sound, but actually it works better that there's no sound. So I think, Manez, I think I probably have to come out of this screen share and share another screen to be able to do this. So again, bear with me. So I'll stop the share on that one and then go, bear with me, go into the other screen. Okay, I think this may be it. Okay, so uh, can everybody see that? Okay, so um, before I share this, just a tiny bit of context here, um, and then I'll sum it up at the end. So this was a good day with my little boy, um, although sadly, two months after this video was taken, Jamie was no longer with us. So you can see from this what a, a really strong character he was. And there are two ways of looking at this video, um, and I'll explain more afterwards. So just watch, there's no sound. Can you let me know if you see this? Just give me a thumbs up. Okay, just go back to the final screen. So, in that video, um, from a parent perspective, I could look at that and reflect on that moment in time. In that moment in time, I was so frustrated because that nebulizer was needed. And as a parent, I was doing everything I could in that video to encourage and explain, you know, why you should have that, Jamie. Um, however, over time I've looked at this video and now I look at it in a totally different way. I look at it in a way of, you know, Jamie not realizing, or maybe, he didn't want to help himself first. He was helping others. He wanted me to try the nebulizer first. Then his beloved Pine Martin called Archie, um, who, who went with him afterwards because he absolutely adored um, his Pine Martin. But he spent ages with Archie, giving Archie the nebulizer. And Jamie was being such a little tinker that day because he needed that nebulizer. <laughs> But would he put it on himself? He was used to the nebulizer. He was used to the mask. But there was something in that moment where everyone around him, he was wanting everybody to have a go with that nebulizer. And so I just wanted to illustrate that video because what I wasn't prepared for was that you have to be prepared to help yourself. And that is you as a whole being before you can help others. And that's what I did not expect um, on this course, which I have learned, is that in order for me to be that light, in order for me to make others see things, I have to, I have to experience that and let, th let that light in, um, because otherwise I won't be able to help others, which is what I want to do. So Manez, and everybody that's been involved with me on this journey in this course, I just want to say a massive thank you. Uh, when when I set this exercise as well, I was I wasn't nervous, but at first I was thinking, should I plan something? And I was conceptualizing, and then I wanted to approach it in a way that when a new person comes to this course, they have an understanding of what uh, what they could expect and what the course could deliver for them. So I was trying to tackle it in that way. So someone new, trying to um, make the language easier to understand for someone who doesn't understand what coaching is, what uh, what a client is, and what how you might 
interact in this course. But then what I've seen is my journey at the start of this course is a bit the hope no one's uh, scared of spiders. So <laughs> my metaphor was a spider's web. So the spider's web represents my my life. So when I'm a client, when whenever I had the coaching sessions with each of you and individually, I see myself at the center of that web. And then each area, each segment is different parts of my life. And for me, you have your interpretation. You had your interpretation when your eyes were closed. For me, the lines represent different events in my life and the nodes are important events in my life and all people that I've met, um, major events that have impacted me, major, major decisions. And there's some parts of my web which are which are broken some parts are really solid like the the core is really solid and as you get further and further out there's ambiguity so that that's the way I see myself as the client so when Minar said you're going on a on a journey in fact I would say to everyone I went on four journeys in this one journey and I'm just going to explain what I mean by that so what one the first journey was me uh, as as the the client so when I didn't realize uh, when we were having the monthly sessions following each session as I was allocated another coach to practice with I was being the client as well so I got coaching one-to-one -one coaching sessions for free and I was I was getting developed and my personal development was getting tackled so I had that experience which was only reflecting now I was thinking that was really good as well so I enjoyed that element and then the other journey was me being the coach. So me stepping, like what, me stepping into the coach. So I want you to visualize that web again. So when you have the web, the coach, I see the coach outside your web. So they're looking in and you're guiding them to the different points that you want them to be guided to. And the coach will help you highlight an area or go back to an area that you've maybe not focused on, or an area that's maybe fragmented or the, your relationship with that area is not quite right. So then the coach will help you guide you to go back through that journey again and maybe improve that relationship or create a new neural network connection that might open up between that story and your next story in your next life. So that, that was the other element. So, the, so you, as a client, you're in the center of the web, the coach is on the outside. And then the third journey was me as the student so because I thought this is a course I'm joining this course as a student because I don't know coaching and I don't know techniques of coaching and then I was surprised that there's elements that skill sets that I've learned that actually I found quite uh, common when when we started doing some of the exercises the visualization the conceptualization of uh, metaphors I found that I could really relate to that and then as a student, I've learned you've got to be open and trust and trust in the process. That was the biggest thing. Like after lesson one, I thought, I'm not sure about this course. Is it gonna is it gonna be the right thing? Then after lesson two and lesson three, and then also the monthly sessions I had with the individual people, get, I enjoyed them a lot. And then journey four is only when we when Minaz has put us into the the trios when I've really enjoyed those even more than all the other aspects. So when we're in a free, like we did one today and we did one in I think it was in module two or three, when you're the observer, and then also when Minaz used to get volunteers and people to come forward and practice a session, it's like going to a cinema and they have so it's like you're watching the film. You've got surround sound you're just enjoying the whole interaction and the and the, the 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 conversation the interaction between the two human beings and how they interact and interplay of each other and that is even more enjoyable than sometimes being in the play because then you learn you learn from that as well and you think oh maybe I should edit my film slightly differently and then then you learn from all all of those four journeys I've learned different skills and different things so um, I'm just going to share an image now. So I'm going into. I'm going to share the screen. And uh, yeah, so this is my life. So I'm saying my life as a metaphor is a web. So I'm at the center when I was born, and I've had different experiences, different education. I've met different people, and I see the lines as a different experience. So I've got areas that there's space there. There's also space outside the web. I could go further out. 
and I, you, you shouldn't limit yourself to your boundary of what you've had in the last, whatever age you are now, whatever experience you've had, there's also room to go back and improve on areas or skills that you thought that were there, but sorry, skills that you think that are not there, they're actually hidden. Sometimes they're hidden. I didn't know I would be good as a coach, but it was hidden inside me. So this course has enabled me to see that I have that skill set inside me. And then actually, so this blank space I see as my coaching space and I could expand on it and uh, share the knowledge that I've gained in this short period of time with all of you. And um, that's that bit. And then I'm just going to show the next image. So the next image is I see as when we have the interact. So when we're in the coaching sessions, it's about being present in that moment. So I just tried to get an image. The red line just symbolizes basically the coach trying to target an area of focus and area. It doesn't have to be a question. Even today, when I had the uh, with Jill and Carolyn, we had a session. I just learned something. But when them, when those two got, uh, were having coach and client, uh, and I was the observer. I learned one thing today, even today. So you're always there. You're going to learn something every single moment of your life and taking that forward. So the red line just represents the, the coach trying to focus in on, on an area or event on that person. So it could be, you could ask them a question. You could just say a word. You could do a physical interaction, smile, and then they would respond and open up that square or that grid and say this, 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 and then it will enable you to explore, enable them to find the answers if there's answers to be found. But then sometimes there might not be answers to be found. And I realized that uh, just like, I just want to say one thing, like thank you to, first of all, because I, I just do it in order because I, uh, month one, I had Fatima. So I learned from Fatima um, coaching with her. Then I had Maria, then I had Alex, then I had Vicky, and then I had Haley, And then just recently I had Jill. So all six of those have been my um, ment my my guides as well. Minaz was the core guide, and then I see these guys as my um, people, uh, my backpackers on my journey. So they've enabled me. So when I've felt unsure or a bit scared with the sessions with them, I've learned from them, and hopefully I've transferred what I've known. And they're all confident people. And it's just sometimes you feel you have self-doubt, especially I really resonated with the two uh, people. One from you had from uh, Africa, the guy who's speaking in, I think it was in week one or week two, and the lady from America talking about the inner voices. We all have these inner voices and the inner voices get amplified. Sometimes they, it's about how you listen to that inner voice and reconfigure it to enable you to go forward. Sometimes that inner voice can just hold you back for years. It's there and it's saying, you're not good. You're, you're, uh, you might fail. You, uh, you shouldn't do this. You should stick to what you know. And sometimes I feel like that needs to be pushed. And if you can push that or push back on that, we will get more. And I'll thank all of those six, but also the other, uh, like Saiba, Roxana, uh, Farah, obviously, and everyone else and Mohammed. And anyone else, if I've met, and Ka Carolyn today as well. So all the other participants as well, because we've had interac um, interactions in the modules as well. Yeah. And then, okay, last image. Uh, enjoy. So the other thing I wanted to say is, it's basically we we as a, a human entity, especially the exercise Manaz did yesterday, is stripping back all the layers. And uh, there was quite a few exercises we did along the six months where Manar stripped back layers and look how diverse this group is we're all mixed ages different colors different backgrounds different religions we live in different parts of the country and and different parts of the globe but when we come together it's just you when you step into the client's shoes all of the biggest thing I've learned is to strip that back I have to I have to have empathy with the the females that I'm talking to or the person from a different background and it's about you uh, I'm a man I'm a dad I'm a father but then when you go into that client shoe I just strip that all back and I'm just a person I'm just a human being I've got no layers so then I can't judge because I can't base it on my layers because those layers are not relevant to you we're all the same the core entity is the same and we're all going to we're born, we have this space in the middle, 
and then we leave and then we will be hopefully reunited into that one source that where we came from um so that's that bit and then the other bit i was just going to say is oh yeah next a actions and what i've learned finally the next actions is this is i see this as all of our webs so each of you have your web and when we've had interactions we've uh, made connections like each of each of you have had different um life circumstances different uh, um areas that you're focusing on but then e nearly all of those seven people or six people i've mentioned there were so many similarities i had issues and then when i was talking to one of you you had and it was it was just eye opening to find out you all have similar there's similar traits we can get connected as clients as well and you learn from each other and as if we're connecting that extra power about like what Manar said yesterday, changing the community, changing the world can be achievable because we have these uh, neural network connections that we will make. There will be shared values. We all want to achieve. We all want peace. We all want uh, tranquility in our lives. So fundamentally, the core is all the same. It's just the layers are different. Someone has more layers someone has less layers and some of the layers are more complex and it's about finding out where the similarities are and then going forward from there and then i'll just show you now it's similar to that image if you find that image harder to relate to it's just it's similar to that so just all of the different networks have been connected up and then we can we can build on this going forward and my uh, my next action is mainly is to take the skills that I've learned and implement them in my daily life. So with my family, with at work is, is about being confident and being present more whenever, because I think sometimes some events happen. I, w I was not present. And the biggest thing I've learned is being present. I just keep, share one um, idea, which happened recently is just taking kids ice skating. I took them on ice skating. Yeah. And then after a long time, and I, if you can, if you've ever been ice skating, you remember, you have a fear when you're doing ice skating. If you've never done ice skating, you have the fear of falling. So there's that element. There's the fear of embarrassment. There's a fear of, but you're not gonna die. You're not gonna. You're not gonna. There's not. You're not gonna end up in hospital. As long as you're careful, you will get through it and you enjoy it. And that, and I found I was shocked how present I was in that ice skating section. We went at the beginning of August and we just went last week as well. I, I found ice skating makes you so present. They were, I was not thinking about the hour before, the hour after, I was so in the zone. And then when you're in that zone, it's take, having activities like that, when I'm preparing food as well, and when I'm doing DIY, I've realized those elements make me so present. I'm not thinking about tomorrow. I'm not thinking about the 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 day before and that's the biggest takeaway i need to take is being present in every single activity i do as much as possible so that you can get the maximum that's one thing and then the other thing is about building on the knowledge that i've gained from coaching and sharing that in some some way or somehow with other people that i meet in the future so i hope everyone enjoyed uh this session this session and i hope everyone enjoyed the, the nine months and i've enjoyed uh, every single session that we've had okay um so this is the reason that i'm here and um, this is kind of how it all started not to go right back so this was i mean this picture was taken in 2015 but 2014 um my daughter was um a week for her second birthday she was diagnosed with stage four cancer uh, which has taken me on a path that i am on today so Watching a child fight cancer um, puts us all to shame, actually, and the strength they have um, is really something that, yeah, I could only wish to have. Um, so that took me to the career that I'm on now, um, which is with Solving Kids Cancer. Um, so last year, I think it was April, as part of my job, I was looking to expand our um our support that we offer for families post cancer um, because I really, really struggled mentally um, with our own journey after cancer. So I found um, Life After Cancer and the lovely Steph. Um, and I was also speaking to a counselling charity at the same time. And I was like, actually, this sounds way better. And I didn't really, I've never really heard of coaching too much. So 
um, took it to my bosses and like thankfully they um, was as enthusiastic as I was and was like, yeah, it sounds good. So um, Steph gave us a plan like, you know, we I can help coach parents and then why don't you train to be coaches? And we were like, yeah, okay, no problem, like quite naively. Thought, yeah, that sounds good. Um, so we signed up <laughs> thinking, yeah, this is going to help our career. But actually it was just... Um, uh, yeah, I don't think any other myself or Vicky could have anticipated um, quite what we were signing up for. So um, I then met you guys, um, the most incredible people ever. Um, so I, I found this quote this morning. Um, so find a group of, group of people who challenge and inspire you. Spend a lot of time with them and it will change your life. And I was like, yeah, that sums it up pretty much. Um, so you've all just been incredibly inspiring um and you've challenged me but also outside of the coaching like I've learned so, so much from you all as people about religion about culture um and you know our paths went across day to day so I'm really really grateful for that um and you're all just incredible human beings so just I know that picture's really cute so I included that too um so coaching has helped me make decisions. Um, so I had a coaching session with Cyber about my weight and how I wasn't happy. I've now gone on to lose two stone um, since we have embarked on this. So, yeah, um, I had a coaching session with Uma about my wedding. I couldn't pick what wedding I wanted, whether I wanted to go big or small and, and all of that. And I'm really bad with decisions. And he taught me through it, just took me the time and, you know, went through scenario A, scenario B. So I've now booked a venue, thanks to um, this program. Well, that's good. Um, and then with Mohammed, I couldn't decide. If I, a simple decision. I couldn't decide if I wanted to put my little one in nursery. So this was him yesterday trying on his uniform to start tomorrow. So I made the decision that we're putting him in nursery. So, um, yeah, just general life decisions. Um, this program's really helped me. So thank you. And that, you know, the three of you are exhausted. You've all helped me massively, but they were just three that stood out. Um identity that's probably no surprise that I put that um so at the point of signing up like I've I've had a lot of past issues with mental health um obviously since Eva was diagnosed with cancer I was just cancer mom um and then I had Chester in lockdown and there was no support and I, I really struggled postnatally um so it's just mum, just mum. And I love these children more than life itself. And they are like the reason I get up every morning. But ultimately, I've learned from this course that I am more than mum. I'm me. I have so much more than mum. Um, so I've just discovered myself and kind of resurfaced stuff as well that was there before mum life. Um, yeah, and just found things that mattered to me that I didn't even realise mattered to me, like the bigger picture, the world, and, yeah, I learned a lot about myself, so thank you for that. Um, and then just a few quick other things I've learned. I've learned um, a lot about self-care. So I was quite thought, not it was selfish, but, uh, yeah, I did. I weren't comfortable taking the time for me, and, uh, you know, there's so much else going on, so... I've learned meditation, never meditated before in my life. Love that. So relaxing. Um, mindfulness, I kind of dabbled in it, but never really committed to it. So that was nice for me. Um, and it's literally like just five minutes, five minutes out of my day to meditate or mindful, you know, be mindful um, and just be really present. So that's been um, really helpful. Plus, <laughs> allowing myself this weekend, a whole month, you know, a weekend a month, that's all the hours in between like that's a lot of time for me and I've never done that before so um that's been really nice um talking I've just spoke for a long time but historically like Vicky can tell you talking is not my strong point I will get to the point Vicky will go around the houses and I'll just get to the point like boom um I can write I can write loads and I can be really descriptive but I get uncomfortable like something I get to a certain level and then I just stop and I know what I want to say, but it just won't come. Um, so I've learned to talk. Um, thank you to everybody that's taken the time to listen and delve and um, be really patient with me to get to um, the next level. So that's been really, 
really helpful um and listening I've always been a fairly good listener but now I kind of have skills and and you know know how to really be present and hone in on certain things and actively listen to people so that's been super helpful um and self-love self-love is so important and being kind to yourself um I'm not perfect I'm far from perfect but um when I've had like counseling in the past they've always been like you're so hard on yourself and we've never really gone into that too much but actually I've kind of learned I'm all right I've, I've come a long way look what I've achieved I've done this I've done that and yeah you, I've bossed it something like I'm still here I'm still standing so that's good um oh where am I language language I learned a lot about language and um one of the one of the um tasks that we did about going through actions and consequences so I am a massive um hypocrite because I do play the victim a little bit I'm like I need to do this I need to do that or so and then it was like okay do you want to do this if you don't do it what are the consequences of that okay well I don't really want a messy house and then you, you actually want to do it and that's been really helpful to change that mindset for me um it's just a really simple rephrase so I found that really really powerful um yeah so final slide I think um coaching so dreams so I, I have like long-term dreams and then I have short-term dreams and I'm I'm okay with that I'm okay that the long-term dream is unrealistic now and you know I've chatted through all of that and that's fine we can get there um, at some point but it was interesting because dreams that, as I said earlier, that had come to the surface that I put together a long time ago and that came back out and it was like, actually, that's what I want to do. Um, so that's been really, really helpful. Um, but the reality is while I've got young children and they need roofs over their head, like that's not going to happen now and that's okay because my dream at the moment is to to raise them and um, so I'm, I'm generally at peace with that. Um, but I'm mentally stronger and more at peace with myself. Um, and I trust myself that I'm going to make decisions. I've identified values that I didn't really think about too much. Um, so, yeah, just a few little quotes about self-worth and don't let anybody dull your sparkle because I like all of that. I like a little inspiring quote. Um, yeah, and it's been a privilege. And thank you, um, everyone. And you've already helped. And I hope you stay in touch. That's me. If I'm honest, at the beginning, I was quite sceptical. I thought, okay, I'm going to go for this. I've been blessed to do this course. Um, but I was thinking, hmm, you know, I've seen over the years people have been in life. What is this life coaching thing? All these people, I'm a life coach. I'm a life coach. What is it? You know, um, but, ah, uh, gosh, my view on it has completely changed uh, dramatically. I've learned so much from the course. I feel unbelievably blessed uh, from everything that I have experienced and learned um i've learned to let go of so many uh negative feelings and emotions uh feelings of f fear guilt of wanting control um i've learned to listen more deeply um like that active listening i mean with social prescribing which i came in with as a social prescriber as well and i saw the overlaps with the, the two and i thought oh yeah i can see the similarities but this has helped me to delve deeper and I've um, it's taught me to reflect on my own preconceptions, you know, to really think about, you know, what am I, what judgments am I making when I'm talking to someone and to try and let go of those and just be open and to accept that difference and just, you know, see what that person has, what wisdom does that person have that I'm, you know, coaching um it's really taught me to focus as well to focus on what's important for me um and just like Umar was saying about being present and how important that is and just uh blocking out the noise because there's always so much there's always so many distractions um with I don't know work shopping cooking kids there's so many things so much and sometimes you just don't have time to reflect and think and just look at yourself and what you need um it's helped me to visualize about the future and and it's helped me to move forward in personal relationships um as you all know 
and to just simply embrace love to nurture my soul um and i'm excited i'm excited for all the possibilities for the future um that god has planned for me um and if you're not following me on salam.coaching on instagram you should be okay because i've got my little page that i've started yeah little plug there got got to get the plug in um but please do follow me um where i just start i've just started dabbling in there few inspirational quotes whatever i like kind of thing whatever inspires me i hope to inspire others and i just want to say a special thank you for manaz um for making me cry a hundred times <laughs> <laughs> but making me um look into my heart and you know search for what i needed you know to move forward um and thank you to all the other coaches uh for your support and listening to me win john and cry and all sorts of emotions there um that's it really thank you to all of you feel really blessed Okay, so I haven't got any special effects or anything, I'm afraid. I've adopted the just try and talk from the heart, I guess. So um, so I was thinking back to when I first started doing the course. So why did I do it? I, I'd heard from uh, a few people. So I've been involved with Life After Cancer, having had light, uh, cancer. So I was in Life After Cancer and got to know Steph. And there were a few people there that had done this course and they absolutely raved about it like it's life-changing it's life-changing I was like okay so that kind of piqued my interest I guess curious and then and then the opportunity to do it came up and I'm denied about it a bit but actually quite uncharacteristic for me at that point I just thought you know what I'm just gonna do it I'm not gonna overthink this I'm just gonna do it um and my word, what what a good decision that ended up being. I think at that time, I was feeling pretty lost. Um, I wasn't really sure who I was after the whole cancer experience. But actually, having done the course, it wasn't It's easy to put everything down to the cancer experience. But I think it was kind of years before that as well of doing a job where um, so my background, I'm a scientist, I've got a chemistry degree. And then I went, as you know, I went into law essentially so a patent attorney um I was a partner at the firm that I was working at and I just kind of uh slept walked almost my way into that role and the job I was doing it was a kind of case of um working really hard doing well academically and then gradually working my way up in the firm without really stopping and thinking about it because it was just what what you did and I ended up in this position of managing loads and loads of people with another cohort, you know, my fellow partners. And I I knew for a long time that we didn't, there was something different about me to them in that the same things didn't make us tick. There'd be all these discussions going on and I'd say, yeah, but what about how so, so-and-so feels? Or what, what about what about this? And I got the reputation for being the, the bleeding, oh, Jill, the bleeding heart. Here she goes again, talking about people. And um, I used to get told off that I couldn't think properly. You know, I wasn't business minded enough because I was worrying too much about what people felt. So how the impact the decisions were having on people. So I kind of had that squashed down by people over the years. And it actually took the cancer experience and kind of really taking an op- the option away from me, for me to turn away from that job, uh, walk away from it. And so the course, that's a lot about background, but the course really offered me the opportunity to in I don't know look more deeply into what could I do that was more aligned with pe- people are what make I've always thought that people are what make the world go round and I've always had this at risk of sounding a bit sort of cheesy it's like this need to give to, to do stuff with people what makes me feel good in life is when I know I have had an impact on somebody else's life and have made a difference to their their life it's the connection with somebody and it's just I don't know, it can be a tiny thing, can't it? But knowing that you have made a difference. And that's the kind of thing that my old colleagues used to just laugh at me and scoff at. And actually, it's taken a long time, actually, for me to get back to um, not appreciating, but kind of being able to admit almost that, yeah, that is what makes me go around. That is what's important. And that's why you guys have been absolutely fantastic, because you all you're all here because that's what you think as well and it's kind of normalized it again so 
I feel like I've kind of, and, and in the journey, the journey in itself through these sort of nine months, being able to, I don't know, stop and think about my own life, my own personal kind of journey. I was trying to think last night how to articulate it. I still don't think I've got the answer. Something has shifted inside me. I just feel a bit more at peace. I think I was desperately trying to control everything. I think when your life goes out of control with the sort of short cancer diagnosis, there's a natural knee jerk reaction to I need to control this. I need to control this because I can't. I can't control my health in the future. There is an inherent uncertainty there. So I was finding it really difficult to think about anything in the future, plan anything for the future. Um, and I think I was just trying to control the end. And then each step has to be going towards this end goal. But one thing I've really learned is, and it's this trust the process, isn't it? Just go with it. Stop overthinking things. If something doesn't feel right, it's probably not right. If, um, if something does feel right, it probably is right. And just go with it and take steps. And I feel like I've done that to a certain extent and I'm doing more of it in my personal life. Um, and yeah, so and realising that maybe I have got something to give on the person, the people side of stuff and I'm enjoying it. And it it creates a fire in my belly that hasn't been there for a long time. And it makes me want to think about the future. And that wanting to think about it outweighs the fear of what the future might bring at the moment so that's massive um but yeah and when we were talking yesterday I, I always thought I wanted to do something quite cancer specific in terms of coaching I didn't know what it would look like but that exercise we did yesterday was really eye-opening for me because actually what it made me realize, it's not just can it's not just people who've experienced cancer for me it's it's inequality and people being able to access opportunities that enables them to reach their full potential um and I think that that I don't quite know what it looks like yet but that's it's that's broader than what I initially thought it was okay so cancer takes stuff away from you and can stop you reaching your potential there's so many other things that can do that so it's basically trying to level the playing field I guess for people and helping them there which all sounds a bit cheesy doesn't it but um and going back to what I said about when I first took the you know I'll sod it I'm going to do it I'm just going to do the course I'm not going to overthink it I've realized that actually that's the old Jill that is what the old Jill would have done before all this crap happened in life and I feel like there's more of the old Jill back than there ever used to be and I'm so grateful um for the whole process and like I wanted to show you a picture I have so I have got one prop but it's straight off the wall um can you see that that is a picture when I uh Pre-kids, pre-husband, um, I used to go off hiking to all sorts of places in the world. This is um, Morocco. We went to climb Mount Tubkal and took this picture. This picture kind of represents my absolute favourite place to be, up in the mountains. Um, there's just, uh, there's nothing, that, well, there's so much there, but there's nothing there. And you are small compared to the rest of the world. Um, and I feel like, this course has helped me connect back to the things that I love, where I love to be and um, saying yes to the things that my gut says yes to do to yes to. And yeah, reconnecting back to a version, the authentic version of me that existed many years ago. So it's a bit waffly, but yeah, thank you so much. I feel like I've made friends for life. You're all amazing. Um, thank you. Uh, yeah, I would start with thanking everyone for being here and for the support that I have received here. Uh, it was a long journey. A lot of things were changing during the last nine months. Uh, and it was a pretty big impact, I can say. This and the coaching that I'm receiving from someone that have followed this course and at first i was not sure if i will do this course uh, but i met with manas i believe that in january in london and she was like it's possible to be the last time when she was doing it and with one night before the the course starts i was like okay let's do it let's see what's gonna bring and 
there are lots of changes uh i'm not fully aware of at the moment it's gonna take a while until uh, we will uh, assimilate all these informations and i believe it's not only about becoming a coach here but becoming a better version of uh, yourself this was the reason that i have joined this course to learn more and to see more uh yeah thank you everyone and this is short <laughs> i didn't really prepare anything <laughs> thanks yeah so i also haven't um haven't prepared i've had done a bit of thinking um i don't have any props um but i think one of the main themes for me is that it's been quite a long journey as some of you know <laughs> So uh, it's quite a long time ago that I wanted to do the course. Um, had to really work to create space in my life um, to embark on the course eventually um, at the beginning of 2022. Um, and having created some space in my life, then a whole load of new challenges came out the woodwork, uh, which meant I had to defer and join the second cohort um that I did then two of the modules with um and then joining you guys for um uh you know for this for this last module I got ill actually that's what happened during the last um, module with the second group so for me the journey has been I think about 21 22 months from when I started and it would be even like longer than that if you count when I there was one time I came to the thing the, the pre thing the night before but was like oh I just I wasn't ready in terms of you know, having the the time to um to commit to it. So, um, it's been quite a journey the past couple of years. Um, there's been it's been quite tough with some um really big um challenges to deal with, um, particularly on the family front. Um, and I guess it's hard to unravel. Um, it's quite hard with some people will sort of say to me, oh kind of what's what's happened with, with the course or what did you gain from it but um it's hard with a lot of the changes I think to know what to attribute really you know who knows uh what's some things I think I, I know have come from the course and some things there's no way of knowing um really especially as it was over such a long period of time but um I know one of the reasons that I wanted to do the course was to support um family members and one family member in particular who was facing um um really big challenges one of my children and at some stage I realized there was a shift it was actually actually after one weekend uh here at the center where I've been doing a number of the sessions it was going home and coming in from outside having spent all the weekend doing the coaching it gave me a new perspective on what was happening it within the home and it made me see what action needed to be taken and ultimately, I learned that um, coming into the course with the intention of learning skills that would enable me to meet this person's needs, actually, that was too much responsibility that I was taking on myself to meet this person's needs. It's actually about um, supporting them and securing external support for them, which is not my um, responsibility to provide all of that. So there's definitely, I think, been a shift in terms of that thing around feeling responsible for other people's well-being you know especially as a mother um and also in reflecting I realized that it has helped with uh with my other family the family that I was that I was born into um you know with my parents aging they've been really going through a lot and uh I was able to kind of come in and ask some questions um and sort of guide um the rest of the family towards you know finding a solution to uh, my mum's escalating needs um and the pressure that that was um, putting on my dad which has um resulted in, to, in my mum going into a care home um but kind of just in time because her needs have increased so much yeah anyway yeah I think it's I think it's helped I think it helped me to be 
to be to be a leader actually what we were talking about earlier being a leader within the family um and uh, what else to say I think it's been a real privilege actually to join like three different cohorts although I'm a bit sad not to have been on the journey with one group throughout because what I really love is connecting with people um but then on the other hand I've got to connect with more <laughs> with more people so you know that's been that's been wonderful and I hope that being part of the coaching circle will means that I will then you know be back in touch with um different people that I've met over the past couple of years um I think a big kind of question that I had was what's the relationship between coaching and my spiritual path so I'd had quite a lot of exposure to coaching I'd really benefited through coaching um after I had cancer that really um was really helpful for me in in making a lot of changes in my life um and it was actually a coaching session that helped me um to realize that uh coming on as a life after cancer trainee was not the right thing for me because I would be putting a lot of pressure on myself and really over committing. Um, so coming on the course as an individual um, without that pressure has been, you know, has been much better. And I think there is real wisdom in the sort of ups and downs um, of completing the course. It feels like a huge achievement for me just to complete the course. Um, and I think, um, I'm still not sure how um, coach, if I go into coaching, how it will align with my spiritual practice. A lot of people in the, so it's like I'm already a student in one school um, and, you know, have been a pupil in that school for a long time. Um, and there are many people within that community that are also um, drawn to coaching. So I think that's quite an interesting thing to explore. But what I have realised is um, because the practices that we do, um, we receive the blessings through the heart. I've realised that um, coaching is one way that I can uh, allow other people, give a, like give other people an opportunity to access those blessings that I've received over the years. Um, which I think when I was sort of building the sort of cycling network, the work I was involved with before, I think actually that's what was going on, although people may not be aware of that. <laughs> they might think they're just coming to learn how to ride a bike. Um, yeah, so it's, that's a really interesting alignment for me because um, I've already doing this, this heart-based work that I've been doing for a long time. But I think that whole thing about coach position about um, not being invested in the outcome or predetermining the outcome, but just have, being detached um, and being in a place of curiosity and without judgment um, and just waiting to see what happens. It's that for me very much aligns with Sufism. So it's like um, allowing yourself to be the vessel that, you know, the answers come through. Um, and I don't know where the, I don't know where the journey is going to lead after this, but I feel, I feel really proud of myself just for, you know, I nearly cancelled this weekend. My mum went into hospital again. I thought I've got to go to Birmingham, see my parents. And my dad said, uh, you focus on your course. He said, when, when I did my A-levels, I was too distracted. My parents divorced. I really wish. You know, I just focused on it. And it's so interesting. He's sort of harking back to something that was, you know, probably 65 years ago. Um, so I was really happy to have his blessings, you know, to come and um, and finish the course. And uh, I don't know what else to say, really. I don't know where things will go from here, but it just feels like a real privilege to have been part of, um, of everybody's journey. Um, yeah. That's it, really. Thank you. Thanks to all of you. Thanks. It's been beautiful. Um, given the opportunity to kind of understand you, 
first and foremost learn a lot by yourself within this, the topics, the modules. You understand you. And the day, the biggest battle you go through in life is you versus you. You know, it's not me v anyone else. It's me v me v me. A very important and blessed journey doing this. Learning new patterns, new uh, new language, new skills, new meeting new people, um, learning through you know the last eight months of work, you know individual coaching with the different coaching partners. It's a lesson in disguise. You know what we can provide for each other um, through practice and you really grow from it all yeah you plant the seed we planted the seed in January and all these months we've just been watering it watering it to grow into what we are today and we can only sit back and enjoy the view as we should be confident that this process over the period of months has made us what we are today or helped us along the way to add the skills to what we know today and utilize these skills, these uh, empowerments that we've received from yourself through these modules in order to help and empower others. Yeah.